Tonight, we're undercover with the incredible Suffolk County Police Computer Crimes Unit. These are the guys that lure these pedophiles here into this park. Now, let me tell you about this setup that we have out here. There's a camera over there. There's one on the roof right there. There's one right there. There's one hidden over there. And there's one around the corner. Now, these creeps are coming here to have sex with who they think is a 13-year-old girl. But she's our decoy, and she works closely with this unit. She's one brave woman. The first capture. Tell me about it. I spoke to him on the phone, and he said some vile, disgusting things. He wound up showing up in a fancy convertible. He acknowledged me. I waved back. I went up to him. He didn't know what hit him when the cops came on. And he almost took off. But you had the cool to walk up there and engage him so these guys could take him down. You're one brave lady. I know you work closely with this unit. Please keep up your good work. Now, let me take you inside to the secret command center. Four o'clock guy is still scheduled. We're hoping he's going to show up. We're not sure a car. Who is Michael on this? Probably what he was driving. Wait, wait, wait. Mercedes convertible. She's waving. Here he comes. Easy, easy, boys. Here he comes. Look at him. He's in a big hurry. Here he comes. He's parking. He's parking. Hold on. Hold on. Look at this guy. He's pretty, he's pretty, he's pretty buffed up. Hold on. Hold on. Let him come across the street. Look at him laughing. Hang on. Hang on. Stay right on him. All right. Let's go, let's go get him. Let's go. 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 Good work, man. Good work. He's got the condom right there. Look at this. Coming to meet a 14-year-old girl. What's your name, pal? What's your name? Mike. Mike? Mike, you made a mistake, Mike. Big mistake. I think people don't really know how dangerous the Internet is and how much a danger their kids have. That a muscled-up creep like this guy could have grabbed her and, and we might have never, ever seen her again. I hope parents get a message. John, my heart is still pounding. Incredible takedown. Two for two. A lot more to go. Okay, up next, John Turchin has the story of a creep just like that guy who went online to meet a young girl and then crossed the line. He's still on the loose. Imagine your daughter, your 12-year-old daughter, trapped in an apartment, fighting off a stranger. Shut up. Nicole was your average kid. So how'd she find herself in a situation like this? It all began in the summer of 2004, when Nicole posted her profile on AOL's People Connection. Like most kids, Nicole was obsessed with chatting online. She was also careful to keep these conversations private from her mom. The computer, the bane of our existence. That's how I describe the computer. Unfortunately, it's a necessary evil for kids today. Her fascination with it began when I lost the war and the computer went in her room. At the time, Nicole was having problems talking with her father. So she reached out to Michael, a 27-year-old man who began charming her online. 27. Wow. He seemed like a really nice guy and someone who would be there to listen to you and just someone to make you can talk to. Michael soon seized on what Nicole was desperate to hear. It made me feel special. So, I mean, I'm like, wow, I can have an older man figure in my life who acts like he likes me, who acts like he loves me. He tells me he wants to meet me. And he keeps going on and on and on about it. So on August 4th, 2004, while Nicole's mom was running errands, Nicole secretly agreed to meet Michael. Was there ever a point on your way there that you thought, maybe I should turn around and forget this whole thing? Yeah, like the whole entire time, I was thinking, maybe I should turn around, maybe I should just go home. And, like, I didn't, but, because inside I kept saying, let's go home, let's go home, let's go home, but my feet just like, kept going forward. Nicole, over here. I, I walked over to his car. He opened the door. I go into his car. I was petrified. I didn't want to go in his car. You look even more beautiful in person. We talked for a little, like, a little bit. But police say Michael wasn't really interested in just talking. It's okay. He stopped. Fondled my chest. 
and touched my thighs and everything. And he, he made me touch him. But what happened when you told him to stop? He didn't listen and he kept going. Stop. Police say when the assault ended, a frightened Nicole ran home. Cops say Michael instantly got in touch with Nicole, knowing how vulnerable she was. He's like, oh, uh, I'm sorry for the car ride. I, I didn't mean to overreact like that. Uh, it's never going to happen again. I'm like, maybe this guy's for real. Maybe he didn't mean it. Maybe he just overreacted to everything. Wanting to give Michael another chance and believing she had no one to turn to, Nicole agreed to see him again. On August 7, 2004, Nicole lied, telling her mom she wanted to meet a classmate at a bookstore. You do for school. You don't go anywhere alone. You know that. Oh, come on. It's for school. Fine. Take your cell phone. And I want you home in an hour. Do you understand me? Okay. If you're not and you don't pick up on the first ring, I'm coming to get you. Okay. And you, you have to I give know. trust to get trust. So within the parameters that I thought were fair, reasonable, and fairly safe, I let her go out my front door. You know, I like to have a lot of... Police say this time this predator had bigger plans for Nicole. Soon, she was trapped in his apartment. I, I thought I was going to die, like, right there. I'm like, he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me, he's going to kill me. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, shut up! <laughs> no! He lays me down, and then he lays on top of me. She wasn't home within the time that I thought it should take her to get home. It's my mom. I have to go now. Because my mom. I need to leave now. Come here. Wait. 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 If my mom hadn't a call, I think I would have been dead. Cops say Jamie's call is what stopped the attack. Michael quickly drove Nicole back to her neighborhood. You know, something is wrong. I know it. Jamie questioned her daughter over and over, but an embarrassed and frightened Nicole couldn't tell her mom the whole truth. I was at the bookstore with Sarah. You were supposed to be home an hour ago. Fishing for an answer, Jamie asked her daughter this question. I said to her, did you learn anything? And the answer shook me to my core. Because what she said to me was, I learned never to talk to strangers on the computer. Where'd the computer come from? Jamie knew something was terribly wrong, but Nicole wouldn't say any more. That night, Jamie asked her older daughters to help her search Nicole's computer. I want you to go into Nicole's room, get on her computer, and see what you can find out. They found emails. They found IMs. She had saved everything. They found a terrifying person who had violated my daughter's innocence and changed our lives forever in a heartbeat, in a little girl's heartbeat. Jamie and Nicole contacted the Coral Springs police. The cops then went online and baited Michael into a meeting with Michael thinking he was about to meet another teenage girl. Go, go, go. I was very surprised to see us. We had set it up in a parking lot that had limited access. We had detectives surrounding him. There was nowhere he could go. After police had Michael in custody, they learned his true identity, Wakas Raymond. A native of Pakistan, Raymond had entered the U.S. in 1998. Cops say Raymond then confessed to everything. After his confession, Raymond was released. He was told he had to appear in court on November 29, 2004. He never showed up. He's been a fugitive ever since. And while their ordeal is far from over, this family has come together. And Nicole is hoping to help other kids by sharing what she has learned. People are, like, sneaky. 
they, they can find out like anything they really want to know. They shouldn't put too much information on. And they shouldn't talk to people they shouldn't know, that they don't know. And unless they know the person, like, personally, they shouldn't talk to them. Now police need your help to find Raymond before another child gets hurt. Police say Raymond has family in California and may be working in a fast food restaurant. If you know where Wacus Raymond is tonight, call us at 1-800-CRIME-TV. Next. Previously on America's Most Wanted, we showed you how this killer slipped past the gates of a Louisiana prison, then conned his way past this cop. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not no prison. Tonight, we'll show you his plan to stay free and how he learned it from the FBI. 